Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, Board of uh, Directors regular meeting agenda for uh, Thursday, December 14th. Uh, this is the last meeting of the year. And um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, board Clerk, would you call the roll? Yes. Director Sailors. Present. Director Weber. Present. Director Sheets. Director Gould? Present. Director Wood? Present. Director Rice? Present. Director Jones? Here. Director Costa? Here. President Clark? Here. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd also like to uh, welcome everybody back after a good long break that we had over the, um, well, still the holidays, but anyway. Uh, can I, I'd like to. Uh, I have a pledge our allegiance to our flag. Director Gould, would you lead, lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Director. Metro Cable announcement. This meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Fire District will be telecast on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on Comcast. Comcast con Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is also webcast at Metro14Live, uh, SacCounty.gov. <coughs> Today's meeting replays at 2 p.m. on Saturday, December 17th, 2023, and again at 6 p.m. on Monday, December 18th on channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com uh, forward slash Metro Cable 14. Next we go to the uh, public opportunity to discuss matters of public interest within district jurisdiction, including items on or not on the agenda. Do we have any speakers, Madam Clerk? Um, I have no speaker cards, but if there's uh, someone in the public wishing to speak, please head up to the podium. And uh, online attendees, if you have anything you would like to present to the board at this time, please raise your hand. I'll uh, allow you to address the board. No response. No speakers. Hearing none. Uh, let's move on to the consent uh, items. Uh, board members, uh, you all have an opportunity to look at the consent agenda. And do you have any questions or comments? Or if not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move the consent calendar, Mr. Chair. Motion by uh, Director Wood and uh, second. Second by Director Costa. Please call the roll, uh, Board Director Clark. Sailors. Aye. Director Weber. Aye. Director Sheets. Aye. Director Gould. Aye. Director Wood. Aye. Director Rice. Aye. Director Jones. Aye. Director Costa. Aye. And President Clark. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, next, we move on to presentation items. Uh, first uh, presentation items is by uh, uh, Assistant Chief Green, Metro Fire Peer Support uh, Canine Program. Thank you, President Clark, uh, Directors, uh, Chief House. Um, I am here with Captain Ryan Pullis, who is uh, back by popular demand. <laughs> i um, simply going to introduce to you uh, kind of the administrative side of the Metro Peer Support Program for the canines that we're moving towards. And then I'm gonna pass it over to, uh, to Ryan, who's absolutely our subject matter expert. Um, about a year and a half ago, we, are we getting feedback? About a year and a half ago, is that better? Uh, we embarked on um, the next layer of peer support for Metro Fire, and that is a grassroots idea that really came from a vision that the Captain Poles have been working on is to bring uh, therapy dogs into our fire stations. Um, a year and a half is a long time to be working on a project, and I'm not going to lie, we're not done yet. Um, if this was a marathon, we probably got about two miles to go. Um, but it's very important for us to share with you tonight where we're at, um, I think really for three reasons. One is we want to draw attention to mental health awareness over the holiday season. Um, our peer support members out there are, are usually very busy at this time. Um, number two is this is an innovative program that builds upon what Jeff Wells has done, that we really celebrated him just a few hours ago next door. And then number three is this program is for the entire organization. It's for sworn personnel, it's for Metro Fire personnel and their families as we expand it. And we want to get to that finish line with you. 
So uh, with that being said, um, I want to thank Captain Polis for, Polis for coming out today. He's going to share with you kind of the vision, uh, speak from the heart, and uh, appreciate it. Okay. Always yours. All right. Well, thank you, Chief Green. Still sounds weird, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chris, since I started here, we've been friends. Um, I'm Ryan Polis, I'm a captain at Engine 65A, and I'm also our uh, A-shift uh, liaison for peer support, and have been for the last seven years. So a little bit of history about how we got here. Um, support dogs, uh, canines have been around for a very long time um, with the disabled, with veterans, providing support and therapy services. And it's only a natural progression that as peer support amongst the first responder community, and fire in particular, has taken off across the country that canines would become a part of it. Um, that's how we got to where we are today. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of agencies out there um, using them at this point. Um, so across country, it's been used all over the place. Um, locally, we have agencies that are doing it already. Um, the seed got planted, like Chris said, probably about a year and a half ago with me, and I was just kind of working on it as I had the time on the side. Um, Chief Harms at the time kind of got wind of that, and uh, last winter um, we sat down before he left and had a meeting about it. And um, I'm really glad that he got a Chief, Chief Green involved um, in this process. Um, we kind of throttled back a little bit, and uh, his help that I've had in this process, and honestly all that he's done on his end has been um, amazing. Uh, I, don't, I wouldn't be able to get to even to where we are right now without all his input and the help on the, all the background. Um, At the time, like I said, I, I was running a little bit ahead of myself. Um, I've talked to a lot of agencies that are using these dogs, and uh, what I can say about it is that no one's doing it the same way. We've got agencies out there flying by the seat of their pants. Um, we've got some out there that have dogs in firehouses without a policy even written yet. So um, we decided back then that we wanted to make sure this was done right, and uh, hopefully even produce maybe what could be a model for other agencies to use as they move forward and build their own teams. Um, the vision that we've had um, for this program consists at this time, and this is entry level. This is something that can change as it moves forward. Um, it's always something that we could tweak as, as we move, but the idea would be to have three dogs um, um, assigned um, to the district, um, one assigned to a handler on each shift. So what that gives us, and in a firehouse, and what that gives us is at any, any given day, vacations aside, we have the coverage. We have a dog available um, when we go out for um, diffusings, CISDs, station visits. Um, this is intended for our personnel, but I'm sure there'll be some community involvement as well. And then anyone that's familiar with how we function on the peer support team, um, it's regional and we do assist a lot of the smaller agencies that surround us as well. There's a chance that it could be involved in that as well. Um, to get to where we're at, um, I, I, to me, it was daunting just creating a policy when we started talking about that. Um, that wasn't the hard part. Um, the hard part's been actually um, uh, securing dogs. Um, there are a lot of agencies or organizations out there that do this. Um, the products all across the boards. Um, there are some that um, are using uh, rescue dogs. Some are breeding specifically for their own, agent, their own organization to create a, a dog in this area. Some are getting bred dogs from elsewhere. That They come from all over the place. So um, there's not a list out there across the country of organizations that do this. So everything that I've done at this point has been Word of mouth, um, referrals, phone calls, networking, getting to know people. There's been some excitement. There's been some setbacks. Um, but at this point where we're at today, uh, we've got some applications in with several organizations um, that are very interested in supporting our program. We're on some waiting lists with some organizations out there. And uh, we've got several nonprofits that we've spoken with that have actually stepped forward that for other local agencies are doing the same, want to fund the ongoing cost of the program annually for us. Um, dog food, vet visits, things like that. So um, I'll say the one thing about it is, you know, these dogs are not cheap. It's a lot of money to, I have upwards of $30,000 per dog go into this. So you've got organizations out there, especially the ones whose hearts are in the best place, that are really doing this because they want to. And on top of that, you've got donors out there that are putting up big money um, to do this for us. We've got nonprofits that have come forward wanting to help us. So it's been very humbling. It's been a very humbling process to see so many people out there in the public support our health and our, well, our wellness here. Um, so we're waiting on dogs. Uh, I know that when it comes, it's going to come fast. Um, so hopefully, I think we're talking about potentially, potentially end of January, January, February, um, of having our handler selection process. 
Um, I've got a list of interested people, but um, as we move forward, there will be some official stuff going out there, um, and we'll see what we get to that's interested. Uh, the, I think the idea is a panel interview um, to select a handler, and it's pretty much where we're at. I'm, I'm hoping this is something that takes off maybe in the first quarter of this next year if we're lucky. So uh, turn it over to anyone that has any questions about it. Uh, there's been a lot of curiosity out there. So. Are there specific breeds of dogs that they're looking for? So uh, the process for that, and I'll, I'll say this too, um, there are groups out there that are breeding dogs for this exact purpose, and they've got long lines that do that, and that's great. Um, there are a lot of labs out there, a lot, a lot of pretty docile dogs, but you get into the rescues too, though, and there could be a lot of mixes. Um, all kinds of different dogs are out there. Um, Personally, I, I just think it's what fits in best with what we're doing. Um, I'm really advocating to use uh, rescue dogs. I think that, uh, that that second chance heart out there, there's a lot of value in that, and it really fits in well with what we're doing in our peer support program. So uh, that's hope, what I'm hoping for. I'm not opposed to some of the other dogs that are out there, but uh, breeds, uh, a lot of them are labs. Uh, labs are along those lines. Um, okay, thank you. So I, I have a question. Oh, did you have one? Go, go ahead, Director Weber. Um, Ryan, either in your research experiences, what are some of the benefits? I mean, give us some touchy feelies as far as what what do these dogs do and what what benefits do they provide? So what they're trained to do, and it's a pretty passive process. But if, if you watch them and come in and work a room, um, they're trained to seek out um, anxiety and. and some of them are even trained to the level where they're actually trained to sense um, changes in cortisol levels in people. And um, they will literally, as they work a room, come and kind of just sit down. They apply weight um, to someone's lap, and they're there just to like, calm people. Uh, plenty of studies have showed, and it's how we got to this point, that there's a benefit in that. Um, as far as just breaking down some barriers, getting people to loosen up and talk. And, and I think, I don't know how many folks in the room have been to some of the diffusings we've done or some of the CISDs that we've done, but um, Getting people to talk is important at those events. You don't have to, but uh, it really breaks down barriers. Thank you. My real quick question: um, have You you mentioned panels, you know those kinds of things, and I would hope that we would try to eliminate some of the barriers mm -hmm. that may be involved in becoming a handler. Uh, if you start talking about panels and interviews and all those kinds of things, that may uh, take some people out that are maybe potentially some of the better handlers that we could have out there. So I'd hope that we'd kind of limit that those some of those barriers that might keep some people out of that program. In addition to that, um, have you started to make a list of unintended consequences of this? You just mentioned that a dog has the keen ability of sensing anxiety and stress and I think you mentioned cortisol increases. That's all great until a dog comes and sits on your lap in front of your colleagues and you're telling everybody you're okay. And you're not. And, and, and I would just think that we probably wanna just make sure that we hear from other organizations that have implemented this and what were some of the outcomes or consequences that occurred that weren't expected and may be something y'all wanna consider when you start implementing somebody with a 10,000 times the ability we have of smelling things. Sure. To address the panel portion of it, um, labor's been involved um, okay. along the way in how this process is gonna work. Um, okay. So uh, we're coming up with a fair and equitable process for everybody that's within the, that's involved. Um, as far as the dogs go, it is a dog, um, but also the training these dogs go through, they're heavily vetted to begin with. They're not just taking any rescue that comes off the street right. and, and throwing it into this program. Uh, because of the money that's invested. Sure. Um, and honestly, anyone that's, that's out there that's training dogs and creating this, these programs, their name's on every dog they send out. So um, they don't want to have a problem. Uh, you second, I think there's a lot of competition with it within this realm and you get a bad name for yourself and you're gonna probably put yourself out with most departments out there. So the process for the dogs is long, a lot of hours into training. Uh, typically, it's about a year um, to get them to where they need to be. Um, not to say that there might be a dog that sits, on a, someone, someone, sits their head on someone's lap, um, but I think there's also a time with them to, to work, and there's a time to be off. And you're saying um, that there'd be a dual role for these animals, a rescue, did I hear you say? 
and no, a so therapy? rescue being uh, where they come from. Okay. Yeah, from from, uh, from uh, as a rescue dog. I'm like, uh, yes. that's great. Shelter dog. Roll. I hate to say shelter dog, but a rescue oh, dog. Shelter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the yeah. clarification. Director yeah. Rice, Captain Poulos, thank you. Um, as I really thought about this, and I've seen the um, canines or the comfort dogs in, in a number of incidents, um, large scale, but I think about our own organization. And when I started here, um, a firefighter with the Arden Fire District was the first known firefighter suicide that I know about. And over the course of my career in the Sacramento area, if I sat down and put names to paper of firefighters, some of them I sat in a jump seat with, I can come up with well over 20. Um, one firefighter that um, was a he was he was a great reputation, a great firefighter, and we lost him um, to really the mental health issues. I don't know how else to put it. Charge forward. Um, this is real, and there's two things that I, I just firmly believe are killing our firefighters and ruining our families, and it's behavioral health issues and cancer. So keep your foot on the gas. Don't stop. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right. Thank you, Captain, and uh, well, I appreciate your time. thank you, thank you for ACP, having me. for your presentation. Next. We have a momentous occasion here. Presentation. <laughs> it's it's amazing. It's amazing that uh, it's five years already, Cindy. I mean, it's geez, it time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> so the next thing we were going to do is a five year, five years of service to Director Sailors, and that'll be Chief House is going to do that. Yes, what a great occasion. Good evening, directors, colleagues, members of the public. It's my honor and I'm proud to present Director Sailors with the five-year service pin. During her tenure, Director Sailors has distinguished herself as a knowledgeable, decisive, and thoughtful leader and has tirelessly represented our district with the highest regard. Thank you for your dedication and commitment to the citizens of Metro Fire. And if I can meet you down front, I'd be honored to pin this on you. Director Sailors, congratulations on your fifth anniversary, effective yesterday, December 13th. Thank you, Chief, and uh, Director Sailors, thank you for your service. It's been great having you uh, here among Thank you for putting up with me all these years. <laughs> <laughs> for good reason. <laughs> all right, we move on to action items. Um, first item is uh, we're going to adopt a resolution uh, for response uh, standards and service level objectives, and that'll be Chief Development Officer Jeff Fry and Yes, that analyst, uh, Jake Whelan. Whelan, right? Correct. Well, Good right. evening, uh, President Clerk, Board of Directors, Car Chief House. Uh, just me tonight, uh, Data Analyst Jake Whelan with the Planning and Development Division, uh, here to recommend the adoption of an updated set of response standards and service level objectives. To briefly touch on the background of this topic, in 2009, uh, the board adopted the fire unit deployment performance measures via board policy following the completion of the standards of cover study. That policy set response standards and service level objectives to guide and evaluate district service delivery. Bringing us back to present day, the board strategic plan outlines the need for an updated standards of cover study to better evaluate district service delivery and performance. 
As part of that process, a new standards of cover policy has now been adopted, which defines the essential elements of the standards of cover, the process by which it is developed, and the outcomes that are expected. This new policy, which replaces the 2009 policy, outlines in section two, subsection A, that updated response standards and service level objectives should be adopted in order to better measure district performance and desired outcomes in accordance with the findings and recommendations of the annual standards of cover update. The 2023 standards of cover study recommended the adoption of new response standards and service level objectives to more adequately evaluate diverse evolving risks to better serve the growing populations that are experiencing those risks. Staff recommends that the board approve the resolution to adopt the response standards and service level objectives. I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chair, I make a motion for perhaps one of the greatest achievements of this organization. Uh, well, did we have any questions? <laughs> Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay. I, mean, I would second. Uh, I concur. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, we have a, uh, a motion by uh, Director Gould and a second by Director Wood. Please call the roll. Director Sailors. Aye. Director Weber. Aye. Director Sheets. Aye. Director Gould. Absolutely. Director Wood. Aye. Director Rice. Aye. Director Jones. Aye. Director Costa? Aye. Director Clark? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you all very much for that small presentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, 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 uh, um, okay. Next, we um, uh, we have D.C. Uh, Bailey coming up, and there's a, the topic is a recommendation to adopt the uh, motion. Anyway, uh, the adoption of the resolution approving the side letters between Sacramento Metropolitan <laughs> Fire District and Local 522, IAFF, AFL Seattle. Good evening, Board of Directors, Chief Deputy Chief Bailey, um, Chief House. A few months ago, Local 522 came to the Fire Chief and our team and brought us a recommendation to move forward with a contract extension. Uh, I brought this to you last month. It's an 18-month extension, and it's our recommendation to adopt this resolution between Sacramento Metropolitan Fire District and Local 522. Do you have any questions for Chief Bailey? Hearing none, Thank you. I'd like to entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion. Oh. Director second. Costa? Second. Director uh, Weber? Second. Third. Please call the roll. I'm clerk. Director Sailors? Aye. Director Weber? Aye. Director Sheets? Aye. Director Gould? Aye. Director Wood? Aye. Director Rice? Aye. Director Jones? Aye. Director Costa? Aye. Director Clark? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Very good. Thank you. That uh, That is a good, uh, the, the side letter thing is, is, a, is a good thing for Metro Fire. Uh, the third action item is um, we are going to uh, Adopt a resolution for senior safety management and uh, senior safety management and safety management employees. Uh, that would be uh, General Counsel uh, Lavra is going to speak uh, on that. Right. Uh, thank you, President Clark. Uh, yeah, before the board is a consideration of a resolution which would establish uh, the uh, compensation and benefit uh, uh, plans for the senior safety management and safety management employees. Uh, it is uh, the same as the resolution that's currently in place uh, with the uh, exception that there is a modification of uh, paid administrative leave uh, time paid uh, uh, by 50% and removal of Medicare reimbursement cost recovery uh, bonuses that uh, were previously part of the resolution uh, and benefit package for this class of employees. Um, uh, but uh, for your consideration is uh, uh, removing that particular benefit uh, uh, for this uh, resolution. All of the other terms and conditions of employment remain in, in place. If you have any questions, uh, Chief House can answer them. <laughs> <laughs> Chief House, I have a Director quick question. Has a question. Um, yes, can you give the audience an idea of the number of staff that this resolution will impact? Uh, this impacts uh, our senior safety management and safety management employees, which is our assistant chiefs, deputy chiefs, and um, pilot. pilot. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. You're welcome. And any, are there any other questions? Hearing none, uh, I'd adopt the motion. I'd like a motion. I'll make the motion, please. Director Weber makes the motion. Who seconds? Second. I'll, Okay, uh, Director Rice seconds. Call the roll, please. Yes. Director Sailors. Aye. Director Weber. Aye. Director Sheets. Aye. Director Gould. Aye. Director Wood. Aye. Director Rice. Aye. Director Jones. Aye. Director Costa. Aye. President Clark. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. All right. The fourth uh, action item would be the election of board officers. The recommendation is to nominate and elect members of the board to serve as president, vice president, and secretary for one-year terms to commence January 1st, 2024. And that uh, uh, board clerk, um, Marty, will... Uh, actually, what we're, what, yeah. what we're going to do is, yeah. I mean, with, the, of mm -hmm. course, the um, okay. consensus of the board is to uh, each nomination, we vote on it, mm -hmm. for president, vice president, separately, instead of in a... You know, all at once, right? Okay, we're good with that. All right, so... Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll nominate Grant Gould for president. Okay. okay second. All right. Those, okay, uh, so that was Wood and Jones. Yeah, Wood, Wood is... Yeah. <laughs> and Jones for, uh, for Director Gould to be president. Right. And I will take roll. Director Sailors. Aye. Director Weber. Absolutely. Director Sheets. Aye. Director Gould. Abstain. <laughs> Director, <laughs> Director Wood. Aye. Director Rice. Aye. Director Jones. Aye. Director Costa. Aye. And Director Clark. Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. And for um, the um, vice president, I will nominate uh, Director Wood since uh, he nominated <laughs> <laughs> They're cool instead of me. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> uh, do we have a second for that motion? No, I, I second it. You second it. Thank you, <laughs> Director Weber. Okay. Uh, Director room. Sailors. Aye. Director Weber. Aye. Director Sheets. Aye. Director Gould. Aye. Director Wood. Aye. Director Rice. Aye. Director Jones. Aye. Director Costa. Aye. And Director Clark. Aye. Thank you. Okay. And finally, uh, we're, uh, we're take, we'll have a nomination for uh, secretary. Yes. Uh, I'd like to nominate Director Sheets for secretary. I'll second. Third. <laughs> uh, Director Sailors. Aye. Director Weber. Aye. Director Sheets. Director Gould. Aye. Director Wood. Yes. Director Rice. Aye. Director Jones. Aye. Director Costa. Aye. And President Clark. Aye. Thank you. All right. Congratulations to all the nominees and uh, looking forward to uh, your uh, <laughs> executive committee for 2024. Very good. Congratulations. All right. Uh, let's see. It. Well, um, item number five, uh, this is going to be voted on after the closed session, but. Correct. Uh, it's a disability retirement uh, uh, for a um, firefighter, uh, Anthony uh, Benelisha, and uh, D.C. Bailey will deal with that one. Okay. Uh, do we, uh, it, okay, the recommendation is after discussion and closed session, consider adopting a resolution finding firefighter Anthony Benelisha has suffered job-related injuries and is eligible for disability retirement. So we'll vote on it after, uh, to, so that you understand what we're doing here. To uh, yes, in closed session, um, having been employed by this district for a long time and having had a real depth of history with members that have catastrophic and essentially life-ending illnesses, I would like to have a pretty thorough discussion on this and where we go with this. We owe this young man um, that kind of a discussion. He essentially has given his life for this community, and I want to make sure that we exercise everything that we can do to bring him and his family the peace and the benefits that um, he would be entitled to. I have some ideas I would like to discuss in closed session. Thank Very you. Good. I don't know of a director up on this dais that would disagree with you. All right. Having done all the uh, action items, we're going to go on to reports. Uh, president's report. Um, well, all I can report is that uh, 
and I'm gonna say it right now because I have a lot of other things to say during the uh, um, comments and all that. This has been a a very uh, good year. We've done a lot of things, and and I I so treasure and I'm humbled by the support and the advice of my fellow uh, board members. Uh, what a great group. I mean, um, anything that we we needed to do for this district. Uh, we discussed it amicably and professionally. Uh, we don't, you know, fight among each other. Uh, not even in, uh, not even in in uh, private. <laughs> so, or in, definitely not in public. And so, I I want to. <laughs> well, I don't believe in us fighting in public. So, you know, anything we, you know, you. <laughs> Unless it's something that's on the agenda. <laughs> so. Um, I, I so appreciate uh, their support and, and uh, help during these times. And the chief, your leadership has been just amazing. Uh, council, you've been amazing. And our board clerk is just, uh, in, has been indispensable in helping me be a better president uh, during, the, during this year. So uh, I want to thank you all during this report. And also, oh, let, let me not forget, working with 522 and Matt Cole and those guys are great, great guys to work with. So uh, as an outgoing president, uh, I'm humbled by the opportunity to, to, to serve this year as president. And uh, thank you very much. OK, now we go to fire chief support. <laughs> All right, good evening again. And I'll start with President Clark. Thank you for your leadership on the board and to me. And it's been a pleasure working with you pre, post, and, and during this time. Mm. Um, so directors, colleagues, members of the public, good evening. Um, I'm going to start off tonight with some introductions, continuing with introductions to the board. And I'm happy to say these are both promotions also. Uh, big congratulations to Assistant Chief Kylie Keeley. He was appointed to Assistant Chief B-Shift, Shift Commander, effective December 13th, 2023. And if I could get Chief Keeley up to the podium and introduce himself to you. Good evening, Director Clark, members of the board, Fire Chief House, friends and colleagues. My name is Kylie Keeley. <clears throat> I'm the newest B-Shifter at Metro Fire. <laughs> Was promoted effective yesterday uh, to the B-Shift Commander yesterday morning at 0700. Uh, I've been on with Metro Fire and its predecessor agency since 1995, so coming up on 29 years. Uh, April of 2024 will be 29 years. It's been my honor to work for uh, the, the district and uh, for the better, betterment of the public. Um, a little bit about me, I, uh, I have four children. They're all adults, and I was re recently married uh, three years ago, coming up on three years, and we have a eight-year-old, I have an eight-year-old stepdaughter. <clears throat> Just returned from an epic trip to Japan, and I'm ready to immerse myself in this new role. Um, I'm extremely excited to serve the district at a different level um, with using my experience, my relationships, uh, my education and, and uh, training to better the members of the, pub of the district because that betters the members of the public. I've had the opportunity to work with, alongside, or for many of you directors. Uh, Director Weber, we used to crew change at 21. I believe I met you, Director Gould, at Foothill Ambulance when I did my, my ride-along time for my EMT class when I was 18 years old. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> did you bring your wheelchair with you? Crying out loud. <laughs> Me and Noah. <laughs> uh, Director Rice, uh, I think I was on your last structure fire at the Tuesday morning structure where we pushed a line inside from the Charlie side. And uh, Director Jones, we ran calls together when I was on the private ambulance. So I'm, I'm excited to get to know each one of you directors better, to work alongside Chief House uh, and the team that he's assembling, and to work with the current uh, executive staff and professional staff and <clears throat> develop relationships on a whole other level that I haven't had the opportunity to as of yet. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Keeley. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> 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 
All right, and to continue with promotions, congratulations to TJ DeGrace and Ryan Van Brunt, who were promoted to captain effective November 21st, 2023. And Captain Van Brunt is in the audience. If I could ask him to come up to the podium and introduce himself. Good evening, members of the board, fire chief, friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting to follow uh, Chief Keeley. It's very well spoken. Um, my name's Ryan Van Brunt. I just recently was promoted to 51 on the B shift. Um, I am the son of a fireman. I am the nephew of two firemen, one who used to work at this agency. I am the godson to a retired engineer at this agency. I have a lot vested here. Um, I'm extremely excited in my new position, and I'm ready to be a leader for my company and this department. I appreciate you giving the fire chief the authority to pass that on to me. Thank you. Congratulations. 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 All right, we have some reassignments. The following members were selected to join Drill Master Derek Sheets as drill instructors for the 24-1 Fire Academy. Those are effective on January 8th, 2024. That would be Captain Eric Graven, Captain Matt Sammons, Engineer Alexander Carl, Carl Firefighter Chris Allen, and Firefighter Vito Giolo. Recruitments, we have a letter of interest for the position of Chief Pilot, which just, with just had closed December 8th on 4 p.m. Uh, interviews are being scheduled for those right now. We have some retirements, well, one. Congratulations to Assistant Chief Carl Simmons on his retirement. Chief Simmons retired November 19th after 22 years of service. Director Rice and I were down at the CalJAC Paramedic Class 22-1 graduation. And um, CalJAC and, and President Rice Director Rice, uh, they put on a, a phenomenal graduation for those uh, brand new paramedics, but that was a, a first class for CalJAC and making history in that area. Uh, we had three cadets in that program. Uh, it was an honor to speak at their graduation, although I had to follow Director Rice, so that's always a challenge. Uh, it was just really great, and the, the pinnacle was one of our cadets uh, was named Valedictorian and he's a brand new single role. So I'll introduce him to you later and let him tell you about, him, about himself. Uh, lastly, uh, it's with a heavy heart that I pass along that retired firefighter Bernie Necker passed away November 17th. Bernie retired from Metro Fire in 2006. Firefighter Necker's dedication to our district and memory will be forever cherished. With further information to come, a celebration of life is scheduled to take place on January 13th. 2024, and President Clark, at the end of the meeting, if we could get a moment of silence, that would be great. Absolutely. With that, I just want to say to everybody, um, all the directors, 522, all of our members in the organization, I couldn't be more proud for this now coming on six months venture. Um, I'm grateful, I'm excited, I'm humbled. We are just a phenomenal organization. And to close out the year, um, Merry Christmas to everybody for a safe and happy holidays. And I look forward to what next year brings all of us. Um, so thank you for trusting me. Uh, thank you for believing and continuing to believe in this organization and your dedication. Um, and that's the end of my report, unless you have any questions. Thank you, Chief. Do we have any questions for Chief? All right. Thank you, Chief. Great report. Next, we move on to the uh, operations report, and that'll be uh, Chief Mitchell. Thank you, President Clark, for one more time. Directors, Chief House, colleagues, friends, and public, Adam Mitchell, Deputy Chief of Operations. Um, 
I want to start off before I actually, Chief Rednicki, if you're close, if you can start making your way up here, that would be great. But I will start off with one item that I am very proud to uh, bring to you as an update tonight. As, as was mentioned earlier, our members every day face many challenges day in and day out. Director Rice mentioned the mental health uh, challenges we've experienced and, and what we're doing about that. And he also mentioned um, cancer and what's been happening within our own organization, but also others around us and, and really worldwide. And um, it hits close to home, and, and you know, I know you all are going to talk about that in closed session um, shortly. But I do want to express a great big thank you to both our management as well as 522 leadership sitting here. Um, the last labor management collaboration meeting we had, we brought forth an idea to up staff in existing pieces of apparatus out of Station 110, Decon 110, to further assist us in what we're doing for our members as it relates to exposure reduction, carcinogen removal, and cancer prevention. So we utilize one of our um, grant positions to up staff that unit 24 hours a day, starting back on November, 20, November 27th. Um, we brought that online, and what that is, is uh, it's gonna be a six month pilot program to start, but it's gonna be a response to scenes at an incident commander discretion to come on out, um, bring a unit out that we, again, we currently have to provide some privacy for areas for members to change um, and to get into clean clothes as well as change out their turnouts. But before that even happens, this is in addition to what we're already doing with an, an uh, instrument called a storm stick, which we're using on our fire engines um, and using the fire pump to remove contaminants from our um, members um, at the end of being exposed to those uh, carcinogens within the structure fire environment. Um, they mount to the back of fire engines. Uh, all the battalion chiefs have them right now. We're gonna put one on Decon 110 shortly. Um, it removes 80% of the contaminants right out of the, right out of the gate before they even have to doff their turnouts. And so we added the Decon now at this point. I'm really, again, proud to say that we're able to do that. And again, the, the, the quickness, well, for lack of a better term, of how we got from an idea to going operational, I'm really, really proud of us and what we're doing to our commitment to help our members. And if it helps one person, not get that exposure that creates that condition where they got cancer, it's worth it. And I'm also looking forward, I know Chief Lozano is here with the safety division on what we're doing next for our next initiatives. We have some other things in the hopper with some decon bags and, and the more things we can do to reduce our, our members' exposure, the better. So again, thank you um, to 522 for the quick work on that and making this, making this better for our members who um, are out there every day uh, doing a great job. So, um, uh, I'll now, Chief Mitchell. Yeah, go ahead. A quick comment on that. I just want to um, mention the, the quickness on this idea to to implementation. This is a, a reflection of collaboration with 522 labor management meeting that brainstormed this, put it into effect, and it was implemented with zero cost to the organization. Um, it would it would not um, be out of turn to say we. An assistant chief at the time that was in charge of special operations, Dale Turner, and I took a trip back to Texas for a grant, recognizing at that time, which was about 15 years ago, that the decon use of this equipment would probably be slim, if at all. We were able to change that spec for what we're seeing today. Um, so I've got to say a huge thank you to Chief Dale Turner for the vision, um, being open-minded, and looking at the future that we didn't even know at that point was coming. This has zero cost to the district, but the savings we don't even know about yet. When we change culture, it takes a little bit of time. And so you can imagine when this was implemented that fast, how labor and management had to work together to express the message. One of our members went around with labor when they were expressing this message after the bulletin when we had a little bit of pushback, because it's change. He mentioned, if you want to know what pain is, I just went through cancer. I'm recovering. Pain is telling my kids that I have cancer. And we got huge impact. And, and Vice President Cole, thank you for sharing that experience. And, and thank you to all of 522. Thank you, Chief Mitchell, for really doing what we've said we would transition to is not waiting. And if we have an opportunity, we're gonna take advantage of it. And when it's zero cost to the district and it has such, much, such big benefit, we're gonna implement it. We're not gonna wait months or years. This is something we needed now. 
And this is changing culture in our organization for the better. We're being leaders again. The update, and, and I think you should share this, the transition and the, res, the um, feedback from, from other agencies yeah. of how we're gonna use that. But I just wanted to end with that because this was, this was um, back when, when we had special operations just starting in this organization. And to look at really thinking outside the box, this is, this is the foundation of Metro Fire at its beginnings we were doing this kind of stuff, and that was under great leadership. So, Director Rice, please share that with, with Chief Turner. This is, this is we, when we went back to Texas, we didn't even know it. And 15 years ago, I think this piece of apparatus has 23,000 miles on it. So, it's rel relatively new. So, just wanted to share that, because there is a, a little more depth to that story, and it, it's, it resonates. I sleep well at night knowing that that collaboration and that night after we made the decision, the implementation the next implementation the next day, uh, we should all sleep a little better from that. So, this is a win again for Metro Fire. Yeah, thanks, Chief. I, you know, there's there's so many benefits of this um, operation that we're doing, and I, I I'm standing here just because I'm at a little bit of a loss for words because I'm so proud of how quickly we got this done to benefit our members. It's incredible. Um, I'll say this, and it's a testament again, this is not new, uh, a new statement for us here. We're being innovators and we're being cutting edge. Um, as far as there's other places out there throughout the country that are doing things, we're the first here in the region to do something like this, and I'm very proud of that. The last county operations chief meeting, I brought this item to them, and I said, when we have incidents in the county, this unit is available, and we're also going to be helping out when we have members going to fires outside our jurisdiction, we'll absolutely send this unit to help them out as well. So we're starting down the path of, again, blazing the trail on what this looks like moving forward, and I'm really, really proud of us again. So that's a really great update, Chief. I appreciate um, those words as well, and, and again, it's, the, the relationship and the, the pace at which we got this done is incredible, and it's because we got we sat down and made it happen, so thank you. Okay, I know I made you come up like five minutes ago and said as you make your way up, but <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to Chief Rednicki to do some introductions, Chief. Good evening, President Clark, directors, Chief House, colleagues. Uh, I'm going to bring up the uh, EMS team members and introduce them. Um, I've been asked in, uh, in response to your request to meet some of our members and those mm -hmm. behind the scenes and what they do. And um, in my role in EMS as a director of EMS and, and really supporting the membership and the calls they go on day in and day out, there's an immense amount of work and people in the background that help support that. And that's our vision, is to support the membership and the calls, the, the protocols, the equipment, everything that's needed. Um, so some of the EMS team, some of our EMS team is here with me. If you, if you folks might come up. And while they're making their way up, um, a few couldn't make it. Um, one that you've met before, Scott Perryman, um, running the <laughs> MIH program. And, and as you all know, and trying to keep up with him, he's doing a great, phenomenal job. Um, I just sat with him today to do a presentation at the county level. Um, in the office, the, back, the backbone of, of processing the PCRs, um, when members of the public have a billing dispute or a question or a low-income application, um, when members from the line are having troubles getting into the electronic PCR system, um, it's, it's those in the office that are helping do all that. So Cynthia Hamilton, Daniel Ortiz Medina, and Alexis Nunley were not able to make it tonight, but uh, again, I want to recognize them. I sus subscribe to the saying of surround yourself with greatness, and as we've heard tonight, that's easy to do at Metro Fire. It really is. We have a, a lot of great colleagues and members, and I feel honored to work with uh, this team here that in EMS and the mission and what we're trying to accomplish. And my role as a director is really to support them um, and be innovative and find solutions to serve our community. So. Uh, we don't want to take too much of your time, but I've asked each of them to, to introduce themselves and just give you a little snippet of what they do. And I think some of these you'll find address some of the concerns we've heard over the last year, such as um, you know, some of the newer paramedics and their training and CQI and all, all the things that we deal with. So again, thank you. Good evening, <clears throat> board, chief house, colleagues. My name is Jim Ellis. I've been with SAC Metro Fire for about 20 years this coming February. I've worked with a couple of you. Um, it's an honor, a privilege to be able to be introduced up here. 
Um, so thank you. My role, I, I came into the office about four months ago, around the same time as Chief House came in. In fact, it was the same day. And um, it's a really exciting time to come into EMS. There's a lot of changes happening. And my role, thankfully, is involved in operations and, and a lot of stuff based on that. So I, I deal with the MMP program, um, internships, and paramedic schools. I'm a liaison with the Fire Academy and the MMP Academy. Um, so I like Director Gould. I've had, I've had the privilege of talking to him a few times about his school. Um, recently, right? Recently, last week, yes. Um, <laughs> so if you have any interns ready, we've got somebody we could play some with. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, um, going forward into this next coming year, it's exciting because we're gonna be potentially transitioning some more ambulances, hiring some more MMP members, trying to come up with the balance of, you know, do we have enough numbers, paramedics, EMTs, and trying to get people to go to school and become paramedics. Um, so, yeah, thank you. All right. Good evening. Eric Mattioli, I started in uh, EMS probably about three months ago. Um, I, I grew up locally around here, uh, Citrus Heights. I uh, started Metro Fire in 2002 and, um, you know, decided for something different, a little bit of a challenge. You know, I've been at, in the firehouse for 25 years now total. I worked for Met, uh, Cal Fire before this. So wanted something new, talked to Chief Rodniki, and uh, it sounded like a good idea. So here I am, and it is a challenge. There's a lot of work. Um, I have oversight over our narcotic system. I work closely with Dr. Smalls and EMS 24, do a lot of communication and making sure that we're uh, up to date on that. I also oversee the ChemPAC system at uh, 111, and I also have uh, oversight over the equipment, uh, such as our gurneys, our um, Lucas devices, our uh, LP15s, which we just finished up today. We just got those all serviced. Uh, our gurneys, which uh, was a project that started long before me, and it sounds like um, it was a lot of work. And, um, <laughs> and I want to thank you for your support on that. Those just finished up, and in my overtimes uh, out in the field, I get to talk to the crews, and they, um, it's a lot of good feedback. So they're very happy, the strength of them, the batteries last better, the handles, there's a lot of different upgrades. So those are really good. So um, that's a little bit about me. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Kellogg. I've been with Metro Fire for 23 years, uh, which seems like a lifetime ago. Chief House and Matt Cole and myself were in the same academy, and Director Rice was one of our drill instructors. And if you can look at him right now, he's smiling. He usually doesn't smile. He's got a horrible <laughs> scowl on his face. And in the academy, when he had that face, you knew you were in trouble. So he was terrifying. I've grown to love him. He's a surfer. <laughs> I also surf, and I want to go surf with you in the ocean at some point. Man, I love up. you. I'm so fan <laughs> yeah, <of> you. No. <laughs> love you too, Chris. Do we Guys, to um, 23 years is a long time, but better than that is I've been married for 28 years. There you go. I met my wife. <laughs> my wife my, when I was 19, and now I'm 50. And it seems like it was a lifetime ago, because it really was. Um, so we've got three kids, Noah, Jonah, and Hannah. Noah is one of our MMPs. He's working today. If there's a video, hi, Noah. Um, so he's one of our MMPs at Medic 23. So if you live in the district, you call 911. It could be him. Um, he is currently in paramedic school. He's doing his, uh, in, um, what is it? Internship. His internship uh, at, tw um, 24 and 109, and he's doing good, so I'm happy for him. But you guys are talking about cancer, and so I wrote this note so I didn't forget. Um, Tony Blanca is my cousin, he works here as well, and his wife Paige uh, was just recently diagnosed with stage three breast cancer, and tomorrow she has a double mastectomy happening, and it's gonna be not, um, well the doctor said it's not good, and so, so what do you think about her and praying for her, you guys? If there's anyone in here who knows God, tonight would be a good night to pray to him for her. Um, Job-wise, I was in a firehouse for 23 years, and my old boss on Truck 26, he does say surround yourself with great people, and sometimes you don't have a choice, but sometimes you do, and I did have a choice. And so, because of him, I'm here. 
And if he goes away, then so will I. And so, <laughs> whoever's wow. in charge, funny. Make, funny. whoever's in charge, make the right choice. Um, my job in EMS is to work alongside Adam Blitz. He's a CQI coordinator. I had no idea what EMS people did. I was in a firehouse as a fire captain. I said, what do those people even do? And now I know it's nonstop, and we do more people in EMS. However, I work alongside Adam Blitz as part of our CQI, and so we look over tags. Uh, our members go on calls. We have, they have to write, like, uh, things they've done, the patient care report, and so we look over those uh, reports. And we see if there's deficiencies, and if there is, I address those members in their firehouses. That's pretty much it. A month, wait, that's not it. I, there's like 15 things uh, that I'm assigned to that I could use an assistant. <laughs> so if anyone goes on light duty, you're my assistant. Thank you so much. You really got to work on your person. Any questions? Yeah, no. Thank you. Cheer up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nobody follow that. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Good evening, President Clark, President-elect Gould, <clears throat> directors, chief house colleagues, and the public. My name is Adam Blitz. I met you guys in January. I've been at Metro going on 11 months. <laughs> I've right. been uh, working uh, uh, in this area as a paramedic for th coming up in January would be 33 years. Right. So I have a lot of intimate calls and history with a lot of people at this department, and it's uh, this, uh, I was waiting for the shoe to drop after a few months, like at most jobs, you know, it sounds great, the honeymoon's over, uh, the shoe never dropped. I wake up every day thrilled that I am trusted to work here at such a great department and with such great people. I uh, think of my job as, as uh, first of all, nobody wants to do CQI, so that's one of the things I'm lucky for. It's, you, you find a talent or a knack or a niche you can fill that a lot of other people just, oh, I don't want to do that. It's scary or I don't like it or it's boring. We deal with data, crunching numbers, calls. I can uh, tell you how many STEMIs we run, how many times we pay someone, things like that. Um, but I really look at my job as twofold. One, one half of my job I look at is to uh, invigorate people, get them engaged, to stay engaged or be more engaged in EMS. Uh, the way I do that, I, I message one-to-one -to, -one to the medics on image trend about calls on that PCR. Um, we have uh, ways that they can contact me, like they can check boxes that we've put onto the PCR that they want to be uh, have this call looked at or get the follow-up on. That helps get them engaged. Uh, things like that. I've been teaching at the academies to uh, tell them what CQI is, what med legal is things like that, um, and what we do there is uh, I also run uh, lots of audits. Um, there's focused audits. I have to handle the reporting that we do for you know, CARES reporting, QIPs, all these other reports we have to do every year. So it's a, it's a pretty big job, but I love it. I wake up uh, every day living vicariously through our medics because my favorite job was actually one-on-one -on -one patient care. That was my favorite office was the back of the bus. My, this is coming right up there now, my office over there because this is a, I just have loved this year. The other aspect of my job is defending our people. So I get complaints from hospitals, complaints from citizens, complaints, you know, not, and not, it's not like I get these all the time. You have to remember, 7,000 calls a month, a handful of complaints. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to keep it in perspective. Um, a few months ago, uh, President Clark came through our department and made a comment about an embarrassment of riches. And I feel that when I have, you know, I've already seen some EMS captains move out from the day and bring in new day captains. And I was like, oh, what's gonna happen when Hogan leaves? I don't know, you know? <laughs> and you know what? Everybody, everybody is talented. These guys all have chops that I, like, I, I'm impressed that there just is an embarrassment of riches when these captains come in and others go out and others come in and they're just as engaged, just as dialed and really good at, at what they do. Um, I also deal with the regulatory agencies and things like that. I don't want to bore you too much about my job, but uh, mainly I, I've enjoyed most engaging with the crews, um, and their feedback to me has been they like being engaged with. So rather than just getting a nasty gram, you know, I was told uh, they, when they would log into Image Trend and they saw they had a message up in the corner, a red number, of like two, they were like, oh, God, what did I do? 
And nowadays they're like, oh, we're going to talk about this. And usually it's complimentary. So that also is, uh, I think, helping. Um, I've uh, really enjoyed the academies I've been a part of, the new people that we've been hiring. And I just, like I said, I wake up every day thinking I am the luckiest guy in Sacramento. So thank you. Boy, that's the kind of employees we love. <laughs> love to come to work. That's great. Hi, board members, Chief House. My name is Eric Satch. I currently serve as EMS 24 on the B shift. Uh, I did a stint as EMS 24 a couple of years ago and decided I'd come back in and do it again. Currently, EMS 24 supports the day to day operations in a 24 hour period with uh, all the EMS. I find my days filled with restocking narcotics, dealing with the challenges surrounding wall times, APOT, you name it, we do it. The health and welfare of our members, if they get injured or burned, serve as a after hours DICO for the department as well. It's kind of a catch all position, which I actually really enjoy and love. I've been a paramedic for going on 30 years now, started in the privates. I remember riding with you and my brother at 21. My older brother was a captain here. My father started as a volunteer with Citrus Heights Fire Department and predecessor agency. It's hooked, it's family tradition. Yeah. Tried doing an office job, it just didn't take. I was allergic <laughs> to it. So here I am, that's it. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, is Chief Hinky here? Because I think I no, beat he, my he five left. years that he wanted out of me. Again, thank you for your time this evening. As you can see, uh, very fortunate to uh, work with these individuals and really be uh, inspired, mentored, and led by them day in and day out. And with our focus on supporting the public and our members, uh, it's been a privilege to be in this position. So thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. Guys. Thank you. <laughs> You, you I, have, I have, I have, I look at Chief Bailey because he always goes, man, those ops reports are so long. This is what happens when we have one <laughs> oh, month Oh, this months. is great. So I have one more. All right. I, one more thing, Ty. Okay. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I do want to feel, hey, it's the end of 23, right? We got to pack it all in. So, um, you know, opportunities exist sometimes when our members do really, really great things out in the community. They do it every single day on a lot of different calls. We also have processes in place to recognize those folks through our, you know, member of the year programs and things like that. I did want to take some time tonight just real quick uh, here uh, to finish up the ops report. When Chief Farika brought this one to me um, a little while back, I said, you know what, Joe? Let's do that at the board meeting. So I would like to invite uh, Chief Farika up, um, and we're going to do a, a presentation of a commendation. I'll let Joe give you the background here real quick. Chief. All right. President Clark, Board of Directors, Chief House, uh, Joe Farika, Assistant Chief on A-Shift. And so... Uh, this is a great opportunity. Our folks do great things all the time, but every once in a while something resonates with you, and this incident happened to do that. It resonated with me, and I felt that it would be very appropriate to recognize this individual for their actions. So back on April 16th, there was a vehicle accident with entrapment on Highway 50, and uh, it was just a, a kind of a strange day. Truck 65 was unstaffed because their crew was actually manning the boat on a water rescue call. Folsom's truck was tied up on an, uh, an emergency, and the closest truck for this incident was going to come from quite a distance. Uh, one of our members was working a callback that day on Engine 61 and recognized the long time delay that was going to exist waiting for the dispatch truck and got in contact with the incident commander and asked him, hey, would you like us to stop by truck 65 and grab the truck and respond to your incident? The battalion chief approved it, and the crew did that. And so uh, tonight, we'd like to uh, ask uh, Battalion Chief uh, Ryan Pittman to come up. Uh, Ryan was a captain at the time, and uh, his uh, decision to do this obviously uh, is outside the box thinking, and it really uh, follows the pillars of the Metro way as far as service delivery, uh, being adaptable, uh, strong communications by reaching out to the incident commander to uh, make this all happen, right. and the individual initiative. So, Chief Pittman, on behalf of Metro Fire, we would like to uh, congratulate you for your thought process that day and present you with this accommodation. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And with that, that concludes the operations report. I'll take any questions or I'll get Chief Bailey. Chief after. Mitchell, I, 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 does anybody have a question or... I, I just want to uh, thank you for uh, present, bringing a crew up. But this is this is something that I think, as directors, we appreciate. You know, knowing what what our personnel, uh, who they are, and what they do. And and Chief, thank you for your leadership in in that. This is this is one of the changes that we have at Metro Fire that I really enjoy. I thoroughly enjoy that. And 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 thank you so much for presenting these wonderful guys that uh, guys and gals that work work for us. My honor. And serve serve and our privilege. community. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that rep uh, your report. Next, we have uh, Chief Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative re uh, report. Good evening, board members, President Clark, Chief House, members of the public, and colleagues. Ty Bailey, Deputy Chief of the Administration. Um, this is something that we did at the comm center when I was executive director there as the assistant chief. And what I did this year for the, the last report of the year is I had each of our divisions come up with milestones and accomplishments that they accomplished during the year. I think that we forget how much work is done each day and how much that you've achieved by the end of the year. And as you can imagine, when I asked for this report, it was pages and pages long. And so I did narrow it down. Um, but yeah, I'd like to go through each of those and just report out for you and really thank all of our uh, support staff and all of our division managers and staff that did such a great job this year. Uh, start with community relations. They assisted in establishing the first emergency operations center, our EOC, at headquarters here at Metro Fire during the major storms in the beginning of 2023, uh, assisting Sac County OES at the county EOC and also message safety and evacuation information that made national headlines. Partnered with CERT and Red Cross for smoke alarm canvassing in neighborhoods in Antelope in Rio Linda and Rosemont. And this was following the fatal fires at the end of the 2022 year. Metro Fire hosted the U.S. Administration, uh, Lori Moore Merrill, uh, the IAFF, uh, the Fallen Firefighters Foundation, Cal OES, and held a press conference at, at Station 68. Uh, also, the Super Special Fire Safety Campaign in 2023. As we all know, the Cancer Awareness Engine hosted, uh, it, it, it went to over 10 events, ran a ton of calls, uh, all five battalions, and um, with that, there's six community partners that were involved in that as well. We had uh, 80 fire campers in our annual fire camp 2023. And then we, or excuse me, our team here from COR and Parker's here as well, the uh, 339 community relation events that were scheduled during the 2023 calendar year. Uh, connecting with over 87,000 members of our public. Including in those were 155 special events, 65 school visits, 53 station tours, eight internal events, seven community room events, four engine drive-by events, three open houses, three station dedications, and two fire extingu extinguisher demos. Uh, through that, they were able to distribute 2,700 uh, coloring books, 3,800 helmets, and 40,000 sticker badges. So thank you to all the members of Community Relations Division. Uh, finance received its 10th consecutive excellent award from the Government Finance Officers Association. Uh, this is for fiscal year 21-22 received excellent award for its capital improvement program plan and annual budget from the California Society of Municipal Financial Officers. Uh, conducted a major fraud risk assessment that's been completed and there were no major findings discovered during that process. And those will be presented to the board in January. Procurement published and carried out eight formal bids including a third-party administrator for our, our TPA for workers' compensation. 
And also procurement also issued 20 informal bids and 1,905 purchase orders. So thank you to everyone in finance. Planning and development. In this one, I had to narrow down a little bit. <laughs> thank you, Aaron. Uh, develop GIS mapping infrastructure to assist the district wide data mapping and analysis. Completed the standard of coverage, which you heard of earlier. Uh, initiated the Zinfandel First Responder Training Center phase three build out. Uh, initiated design phase for Vineyard Springs Fire Station. Completed the sale of two surplus properties. Initiated the development and coordinated external engagement plan. A legislative action plan. And represented the district as a member of CSDA Legislative Committee, CalCheese, FDAC, the Joint Ledge Committee, <coughs> and cap to cap Public Safety Team. Also, they uh, facilitated two congressional visits to the district and also facilitated the 2023 strategic plan. So thank you very much to all of our members of the planning and development. Uh, lastly, it's go through the human resources division. Human resources conducted and completed 162 candidate backgrounds. This is more than they've completed in the last 10 years. Uh, the last time we had this amount was in 2015. <clears throat> hired three safety non-suppression employees, 13 miscellaneous employees were hired, four part-time MIH providers, one reinstatement, three rehires, 14 firefighters, 16 paramedics, 10 EMTs, and four reserve firefighters. Which you heard earlier, Director Costa, uh, during the policy committee, there's the completed revision of 32 policies in 2023. Those have all been approved and posted on our app. And they're currently working on 21 policies that will most likely be completed before the end of this fiscal year. It says miscellaneous, but uh, it's really not. In process of applying for the district's transparent certificate renewal, moved in to the new TPA, Intercare, switched our employees' EAP to Concern. We transitioned to FARA during this calendar year, which saved the district approximately 1.5 million. Uh, we, we, ho we, we attended with HR, the 10 labor management meetings throughout the year. And of course, as you've seen tonight, negotiated. And the good thing about the negotiations is we went from two contracts to just one this year. So we're kind of going in that trend. So that's good that we're going down. So with the contract extension. Getting along. Uh, leave of absences were 121 of our members <clears throat> were assisted and put on to protected leave. And then last but not least, 316 work comp claims have been submitted and processed from January 1st till November 30th. So I just want to say thanks to everyone in HR, all of our divisions, the professional staff. I think that uh, even myself going through this list, and we obviously had to, to narrow it down, uh, it, it really is amazing how much you can accomplish in 12 months as well as when you look at our staffing levels and, and where we're going in the future and what we're gonna need, you know, those are the things that Jeff Fry with his plan that he's putting together, we need to really look at and focus at, uh, on as we move forward. So I wanna thank everyone very much and I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. We wanna thank you about all this. Uh, do we have any questions of Chief Bailey? Uh, thank you very much for that report, Chief. Thank you. All right, next we have uh, support services. Uh, report from uh, I, I haven't seen Chief Wagman. Is he here? Is anyone going to do? Vacation. Chief Wagman's on vacation. Oh, okay, okay. And so he there's no has report. no report. All right, very good. I didn't realize that. Oh, I'd be glad to have you. Absolutely, sure. Chief Lock. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 
Thank you, uh, Barbie Law, Fire Marshal. Um, Amy sent in some updates from CRRD over to Saeed. Um, we've had uh, several recognitions for some of our CRRD members in the last couple of weeks. Compliments from the City of Citrus Heights for our handling of a new business that was opening there. Um, we also had some of our plan reviewers that were recognized um, by members of the community for their assistance on getting their projects moved forward. Um, so that was great to see. Um, that was sent over. Uh, we actually hosted the Sacramento Regional Fire Prevention Officers Association meeting today, earlier today here in this boardroom. Um, that was well attended, part of our holiday meeting and sharing of information across um, the region. Um, tonight, uh, Deputy Fire Marshal Nyren is not with us because she is at a um, kickoff meeting and dinner um, for a Citrus Heights Community Engagement Committee. Um, so she'll have some report back on, um, on that afterwards. Um, and then we also are, have a couple of our probationary fire inspectors who have reached some milestones and have passed off on their inspections of storage facilities and education facilities. So we wanted to um, congratulate uh, our inspectors that are moving along through their hiring process. That's all, all right. I had. Excellent. Thank you, Chief Law, for that report. All right. So uh, next we have uh, um, our Firefighters Local uh, 522 report. Uh, the illustrious uh, Matt Cole is here. <laughs> I, I would be remiss oh, if, oh, I wait a minute. Steal, if I didn't just steal the podium for just a minute and, uh, oh, and, the and talk about the way that Matt hates being talked about the most, and that's, that's recognition. So yeah, this uh, is his he last asked me if I was going to give the report tonight. I said absolutely not. But he, if I would have told him that I was going to recognize him a little bit this evening, he wouldn't have shown up. So um, oh, there you go. So on a, on a night of recognition, right on. Um, I think it's only appropriate to recognize the hard work and dedication that Matt's given uh, not only the membership but uh, the district over the last two years. And I know two years seems like a very short time um, to hold the position in the local, but the things that he was able to accomplish in two years, I think most, uh, most people in that spot would uh, be proud to accomplish in a tenure. So um, for that, I think uh, he should be very proud of what he was able to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Coming in, at the height of COVID, um, out of contract, locking up uh, a contract extension to get the membership kind of back in order, restructuring the entire union, uh, aligning us with uh, uh, executive staff to make progress go seamlessly, um, really stressing on collaboration, um, doing a full negotiations, locking up another long-term deal, another uh, contract extension most recently, um, the support with the workers' comp and, and everything that he's done. Um, he's not only been an advocate to us, but I think nationwide with his PPGMT efforts and um, every, everything that he's done. And so as much as this seems like a recognition to him, I, I think truly the recognition goes to the sacrifice that uh, Amber and Hudson have given the membership, have given this agency, um, the sacrifice that they've given is is something that can't be given back. So I hope that you can make up some of that time in your long overdue vacation that you have coming up. Uh, but without further ado, uh, Vice President Mackle. All right. Without further ado. <laughs> I got up stage twice. First, I was going to apologize for not bringing Chris Kellogg up to do 522 reports for the last two years. <laughs> So, Sean, I will talk about that moving forward because that was fairly dynamic. And then, uh, thanks, Sean. Um, I mean, none of that would have been possible without the team that we have in place. And, and that doesn't just mean 522. With, with all of us, the Metro Fire family, um, from, from, from labor but management and, and you, our electeds that represent our community. So thank you. Um, uh, it totally took me off track. Bro. I'm sorry. Okay, this is going to be a long meeting. I know you have closed session. I had this whole, like review of everything, but I'm not going to do that. First off, um, thank you for approving the side letter. That's rare that a side letter comes to you. We usually do those in the HR office. This is a big deal to extend the contract on a side letter. Um, side letters don't normally go to the membership either. We took this to the membership because a contract extension that duration is very unique. While under contract, we're in a unique place to be able to, I think, put the agency and, and our labor group in a strong place for a, a decent amount of time. 
and that was supported here unanimously and damn near unanimously by the labor group. We supported that 95%, and for anybody that's been part of a union, that's unanimous. Um, oh, so, that's huge. Yeah, so, uh, so thank you for that support. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to those that made it out to our Christmas party. Um, that's an annual event, and it's an important thing for us, so thank you to those that were able to make it, and those that we missed, we'll see you next year. Um, <clears throat> thank you to uh, Chief House, Kyle McDonald, Jeff Fry, Trevor Jameson, Sean, myself. We sat down and had a conversation about governmental affairs and working together moving forward to be able to take advantage of the fact we're under contract for a while and all of the things that we can do together to secure revenue streams, strengthen this organization, and improve our service to all of your districts and therefore our community. So that was good. We also had sat down since last time I spoke to you um, and did County Board of Supervisors interviews. Our relationship with County Board of Supes has never been stronger. That's not just on behalf of 522, that's on behalf of every organization that 522 represents. And um, we're, we're making endorsements to continue that relationship. And we see the fruits of that labor in our relationship now with our LEMSA and all the things yeah. and tools that we're getting to be able to be successful and do a better job out there. So again, none of that is possible without the team. And I'm not gonna go through the list of all the things that we accomplished the last two years. But it has been a journey, right? From COVID to three mm -hmm. fire chiefs to multiple contracts and a new bargaining unit and spanning EMS, like it's all stuff that we should all be super proud of. So thank you to literally every single human in this room had a piece in that. I'm, there were seven things that I had down bullets when um, I took on this crazy lift. And I, and I told my wife, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get beat up these couple of years because there's two things I know about this job. You either suck at it right out of the gate or you're in it long enough that most of your membership thinks you suck at it even though you don't. <laughs> and um, I, I didn't expect to have a Rudy moment being carried out of here by Sean saying words like that and the feedback that I've gotten from the membership. I do feel um, very humbled and grateful for this opportunity, and I do feel supported. And so I, I put down on my piece of paper, build strong relationships with the board. And um, though we haven't always seen eye to eye, and I know it sometimes I've upset or offended or misspoke or just been stupid in communicating with some of you, I've never done that with any malice intent. I've always tried to do the best job possible to move the organization forward, and I think that we have done a lot of that. And three of you are new to this board. We, we, we laid a, a board member to rest during my term, yes, and, and that was extremely difficult. Um, so, so we've been through some stuff together, and I could not be more proud of this group. Like This is a group of hammers, like rock stars. Like You all come from somewhere, uh, different backgrounds different passions, different experiences, and you make a solid team, and I've been honored to, to build relationships on behalf of 522. It's not my relationship, it is ours, and thank you for the time that that took. I really appreciate that. So check one, that was good, I feel like. Um, I also wanted to make sure that we took better care of those that take care of people, right? So to be able to serve the people that serve people is amazing, and Chief House and, and Chief Mitchell just gave a great example of something that we just did just a hot minute ago to put that decon in service, and we've done multiple things like that. So I'm very proud of the work that we've done there together. Um, I also, I wanted to, I wanted to have a positive impact. I wanted our team to have a positive impact on how we take care of our community. And we have absolutely done that with some of the pilots out there with the squads, adding first responders, looking at the ability to get appropriate level of service to calls ALS and BLS, and, and so, I feel like we've taken some pretty big steps there together, so thank you for your support there. Um, I really wanted to strengthen our union. Um, I believe there's significant benefit in being union strong, and I think that we've done that together. Um, our team has done a good job. Uh, I wanted to strengthen our relationship with management, and I, I feel very proud about where we are, um, and not just because my brother Adam House is now the fire chief, um, and yes, we all three were Academy brothers and know your scowl very well. Um, <laughs> everybody's uh, professional career is, is, is ups and downs and all over the place. And, and the relationship between labor management reflects that too at different times. And, and we had some bumps to get through together. Not every conversation has been easy or even pleasant. But where we are right now is a, fantas a fantastic foundation um, to take us into a, what is really an amazing opportunity for a bright future. Um, and I wanted to do all that while staying true to myself, and I believe that I absolutely have, because my most important bullet was uh, work to stay married. And so um, <laughs> yeah. thank you for everybody who, who uh, believed in the power of collaboration and the benefit of working together and putting in the long hours and rolling up our sleeves and working. So I, I could, like I said, I could not be more 
humbled um, and honored, and this was um, one of the most meaningful things that I will have done most definitely during my career, but, but um, also with my life. So thank you all, and uh, that's it. Cheers. Well, thank you, Matt. <laughs> all right. Man, what a meeting. Hey, this is, this is fun. Uh, <laughs> I know some of you, you know, it's getting late, but that's all right. It's worth it. This is the last meeting of the year, so let's uh, bear with it. Um, so that, that concludes our, uh, our reports. Uh, we're going to go to uh, comedian delegate uh, reports, and we're going to start off with the uh, executive committee. I already uh, mentioned that uh, our executive committee, uh, I want to thank you once again for all your, your help, uh, support, and advice. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a great year. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we didn't meet as much as, as we could, but we had plenty to do, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, the, informally, you know, and, and, but not, not as a, a committee, but we, we solved a lot of issues, I think, and, and um, we continue to do so. With the next, uh, the next executive committee is going to be fantastic too. So it's just a continuation of the good work. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go on to um, the uh, communication center G JPA, and that's uh, Assistant Chief Green. Thank you, President Clark, uh, directors, uh, Chief House, everyone. Uh, Chris Green, Assistant Chief in the Operations Branch and your board member for the Communications Center JPA. We last met on December 12th and took action on several items. Uh, the first was approving a tablet command quote for um, several enhancements, including uh, fire mapping. Uh, just for context, a tablet command is an application on the iPads that all the incident commanders have access to in our region now. And uh, this fire mapper application will be very handy in the summer. We'll be able to actually track um, real-time progress of wildland fires, et cetera, um, and make it visible to everybody in the area. Um, and also use that data um, for other data application purposes and hopefully some training applications as well. So that actually is a, a very good um, next step in tablet command in our region. Uh, we also approved uh, renewing the strategic consultant contract with ICS for the next two and a half years. Uh, we also approved uh, the Streamline platform, which is our subscription agreement uh, for the website host for the comm center. And uh, we also approved a new schedule for the uh, election re-election of the board chair and board vice chair position, which will be moving from a calendar year schedule to a fiscal year schedule. Uh, lastly, and the best part of the, uh, the uh, meeting was a years of service recognition for three of our dispatchers. Uh, Elizabeth Strong celebrated 19 years. Uh, Laura Macias celebrated 20 years, and Kylie Soros celebrated 27 years as a dispatcher wow. this month. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good, and no sign of them stopping either. So uh, that concludes my report. Uh, the board meets next January 9th here in these chambers. Happy to answer any questions that you have. All right. Oh, do we have any questions for AC Green? Thank you, sir, for that report. Uh, we go on next to the Finance and Audit Committee, uh, Director Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Contrary to what our agenda says, the Finance and Audit Committee has not met since our last meeting last month. Our next meeting will be January 25th, 2024 at 5 p.m. All right. End of report. Thank you. Any questions for the Director? Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to the Policy Committee. Director Costa. Thank you, Mr. President. Today, the policy committee met. We had uh, several things on the agenda. The first was a revision to the administrative policy for timekeeping and attendance. The second item was a revision to board policy for tra travel and the conference policy, which will be coming to the board uh, next month. And then we had um, the opportunity to hear from our HR manager, Melissa Maddox, um, on some of the great work that she and the team are doing around our policies. And it was very timely given the conversation this board had last month about some of the policies we have, the difference between administrative and board, what comes to this board to act on. So I want to thank staff for the great report, great presentation, and it really level set it for me. Um, and she will be bringing that presentation to this board to level set for the board where we are and where we're going. And as was mentioned earlier, quite a bit of work done by that team 
um, bringing those policies forward. So I, I'm very pleased with you, what you did, and thank you very much for all that. End of report. Thank you. Any questions uh, from the director? All right. Uh, we're going to go on to uh, our director's um, comments and questions. Uh, but first of all, I want to remind you all, before we go into closed session, we'd like to have that moment of silence for, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, Bernie, uh, Bernie Necker. And I'll also like to include a moment of silence and remem remembrance of, uh, of Matt Kelly. You know, he passed away this year, and, uh, you know, uh, Matt reminded me again, you know. I mean, I, I couldn't forget, but, you know, I'd just like to include that. And, and, and those that, that also that passed on this year, uh, we'd like to have a moment of silence for them, too, because we've had quite a few uh, happen. Uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, Director Costa. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a few comments. Um, it's been a year since I've been able to join these professionals up here. And I just want to thank the board for all your support. Um, and thank you for welcoming to this board and the opportunity to serve with you. Um, I was reminded recently by my wife uh, that it's been a year. <laughs> and she told me that uh, you only have a year left. And I said, well, not quite. Uh, um, but I'll say um, I'm proud to be a part of the community and serve the community. And this board has given me the opportunity to do just that. Um, and you know, it's been an opportunity to really speak to the residents of the community and hear from them. One of the reasons why I wanted to serve was to invest. And I think it's investing in the staff. And so we heard a lot about what was going on today. And I think it's nothing more important than this board investing in the staff, their families, and ultimately that has an impact on our community. Um, my younger brother serves. He's a, a fire captain for Cal Fire. Um, and he responded to the Paradise um, Fire. And so you see the type of impact that does have on an individual and the sacrifices that they make no matter the situation. And so I'm very pleased to see that we're doing all we can to find ways to support the men and women of this organization. Um, Chief, your leadership, just the example you set, I think has set the tone. We have a full house every meeting, so thank you for doing that. And thank you for bringing the men and women up here um, there's so many people in this organization, it's an opportunity to really meet them and thank them for their work. So thank you for doing that. Um, and I just, I, you know, Chief White um, has become a friend and a mentor, and so he's always there for me to lean on him. Um, and I want to thank him for that. And again, thank you to this board. And with that, um, I hope everyone has a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Director. We'll go with uh, Director Jones. I, I, I'm, I'm doing it this way. That way I don't miss anybody at all. That's the last thing I'm going to do tonight is miss anyone calling anybody. <laughs> I can't get confused. <laughs> Director Jones. Please. Whatever works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I'd like to uh, thank Director Costa for his comments there. They were very heartfelt and uh, very much appreciated. I would like to uh, thank President Clark for his work as leadership of this uh, nine-member opinionated group. <laughs> and we appreciate your, uh, your positiveness and the attitude of building together. That's been very, very important. Uh, acknowledging all the promotions, Chief House and everyone in the room, thank you. Thanks, thanks for a good year, a constructive year, and uh, I'm really looking forward to 2024 and all the good stuff that we have started and to build upon that. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and all the other holidays that happen. Please enjoy yourselves and be safe. Thank you, Director. Director Rice. Thank you, President Clark. First, I just want to say it's just been a pleasure um, to serve on this board under your leadership. I've known you for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, you just make my day better. You. And um, you leading this board, it's just been a pleasure. So thank you to every board member up here. Um, honored to serve. To the men and women in uniform, um, I, there's no greater honor to continue this work. And, and Chief Mitchell, it did my heart good to hear that that decon unit at 110 is used for more than just I don't even know what. Um, 
Cancer is a scourge on this profession. A year ago, August, the World Health Organization and the International Association on Cancer Research, Research designated cancer um, a class one, they designated fire, the fi firefighting as a class one carcinogen. We should have no workers' compensation come before this organization and, and even discuss the presumptiveness of it. The law is there. The World Health Organization says it's true. The science is there. From this day forward, we should never argue about that. They should be accepted. What concerns me in the year coming up, um, cancer's really hit me in the face. We know we have a member uh, in the battle of it. I attended um, and spoke at a memorial service for a 34-year-old Contra Costa firefighter, John Martinez, that uh, passed from job-related cancer about two weeks ago. And it scares me what that disease is doing to our profession and we all, we all do this and we think, we think about the calls and, and the things that we do and none of us really think about a building falling on us or getting caught in a fly. We just don't think like that. We just operate to our training, but we also don't think about getting sick. And um, it's really jarred me to my core that the, the real exposure in this job, it is our mental health and, and cancer and I know statewide that we're beginning to make moves. I am so thankful, Adam, that um, and Matt, whoever decided to do that with the decon unit. I started here in 1985, and the first thing we were told um, from Bob Chase, our training captain, was you're not allowed to have the long coats or pull-up boots like the Carmichael guys. You got to wear full turnouts and SCBAs and a seat belt. And we cheated on that, and I cheated on it my whole career. And um, I don't have any regrets, but I do regret that. And I will never forget the day that um, Jeff Gibney pulled me aside on the rescue and said, we won't go on a roof with you again unless you're masked up and breathing air. And the things that I'm seeing in personal industrial hygiene to protect ourselves from these exposures, the things that I've seen um, in logistics, to really, really care for the equipment and do it in a right way and present you, the men and women out here, with um, gear that is secure and clean to wear. Um, we're light years ahead, but we're never going to be there. And um, there's such an awareness for this, um, uh, not just today and not just here, but it, I don't even, it kind of leaves me speechless. Cancer is killing our members, and we hear about Here's where we hear about cancer, where we have one of our members that is in the process of end of life. We have a member that's had a diagnosis that they're receiving surgery. But what we don't know is how many of our members are working with a cancer diagnosis that they're working through it. They're very private. That's what scares me. It's out there more than we know, men and women. And I would have been one of those guys, and I was one of those guys, that said awful things to people trying to decon you and the names that we called them. And um, usually they were citrusites guys. I'm, I'm teasing Bob, but we, we all did that. It, they were smart. We were dumb. And um, I only say that to tease Bob because we go back a long ways. But everything that we do to prevent cancer, it's never going to be enough. And, and please keep your foot on the gas. That decon unit will save lives. It will save lives. And um, as we go into the holiday season, I, I, thank, I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank you for your willingness to do this job. It, um, a lot of times it is what it is, but many times it's ugly, it's dirty, it smells, and it, it messes with your head. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you that get up every day and go, and go to work and you do your job no matter what. I always, it used to piss me off when people would say, be safe. You can't be safe. This is a job with deadly consequences. Be careful and train hard and do your job. I hope everyone is um, safe um, during the holiday season. See, I just use it myself. <laughs> but I hope everyone has a good holiday season, a Merry Christmas, um, a, a Happy New Year and um, take care of yourselves. And I would do battalion chiefs and captains, um, check in on your crews. 
You don't know who's hurting. And I can tell you right now, there are members in this job that are hurting. And if you are a company officer, you have an obligation to check in with your crews to make sure that everything is good. And um, I just implore you to do that. Battalion chiefs, um, check in with your captains and make sure you're doing that because we can't afford to lose one person. And I went through this job thinking, there's a reason why I scowled, you guys. Um, and, and I didn't figure it out till about three years ago when I got some pretty intensive counseling. None of it was from the job. It was from um, personal trauma. But there's reasons for these things happening, and we don't have to live with this anymore. Um, know your crews. Talk to them and listen to them and watch for signs that tell you that something's up. We, we go through this job like pinballs. You know, we bounce off of everything, and we think we're the only ones that have this problem or that problem. This is a life-and-death job. Um, it's not a hi-fi job, a high-five job, or a cool job. This is deadly serious business, and you have to take care of each other. Um, that's that's kind of what I got. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of what you, you have done and how far you've taken this organization since I retired. I'm proud of each and every one of you. I'm proud to be a member here. Keep up the good work. Take care of each other because it does matter. Thank you. Good to it. Here you've kept this uh, herd of cats in line, and it's it's you've done a very good job. So I appreciate all you've done. Um, I just want to make a couple comments. Uh, last few years, and even going back before pandemic, I would go out and visit stations, and you sit at the table and you hear stories. And inevitably, something comes up where this firefighter or this crew did something great, and I would always ask, "Well, bring it up. Let's hear it. We, we need to hear more of that." And the response from the captain was always there was a bottleneck, something happened. I told so-and-so, and it never went anywhere. And so, Chief Eureka, thank you so much for bringing this in. Chief Mitchell, Chief House, thanks for pushing this forward. We've been getting a lot of them. Makes the meetings longer, but it's worth it, and our people need to get recognition for the wonderful work that they do. So thank you for that. Um, Matt, uh, agencies are in and out of contract right now all around us. Uh, we would have been one of those or potentially one of those going into con uh, negotiations next year. So for you and your team to have the foresight to come forward and, and come up with an idea that works for everyone uh, to keep us in contract for another 18 months, which is two years from now, uh, two and a half years from now, uh, is wonderful. And I, I want to thank you for the foresight you and your team had and all the work that went into getting that done. Um, I need to thank uh, our, our community in Sunridge Park. We have used to have a little community holiday parade. Uh, haven't had one for a few years. Um, so we put one together this year, and it actually it turned out absolutely phenomenal. I want to thank the crew at uh, Engine 68, Chief House, BC Graff, Chief Wilborn, wherever you are. Um, thank you. Uh, and Rancho PD, thank you all for all the work you did to make it. It was absolutely an incredible event. People loved it, and they're still talking about it a week later. Um, lastly, well, almost lastly, um, tomorrow, for those of you around tomorrow, the Burn Institute is hosting, uh, having its ugly sweater holiday party from 5 to 8 at Sackyard Brewing in, in Sacramento. Uh, you guys can all be there. There's no admission fee. There's no entrance cost. It's just a dollar from every beer is going to the Burn Institute. So it's a great way to support the organization that we all need to support, make sure is there. And uh, because of that, uh, Chief Wilborn, I will be at the uh, um, Saturday uh, smoke detector distribution, but I might be a little late, might be a little slow and hungover. So, but I will be there, but no, it's because I'm contributing to the Burn Institute. All right. <laughs> and then uh, also, the boot drive, February 8th through 11th. Um, as always, uh, the Burn Institute does need uh, volunteers from our organization to be out there, and we need to figure out a way to start earning uh, and getting the uh, funding to the Chiefs so we can get that Chiefs uh, trophy back right. here where it belongs. Um, and so lastly, again, thank you for everyone and every, everything everyone does, and stay safe and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, uh, Director Wood. Director Gould. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as my colleagues have said, thank you for your leadership. It's a rare leader that uh, spends so much time asking for other people's opinions so that his or her decision can be a solid one. And you definitely have exemplified that in 2023. It's, it's an honor uh, to know you. Um, I want to thank my colleagues for their trust in an, another opportunity to serve in the role of president. And I think Brian has hit it on the head this evening. I commit to every single one of you that this year, we will make that issue, um, we will take advantage of the opportunities we have with this fine staff to become a leader in the nation, whatever that means, however that looks, in taking away that issue. Because I cannot stand to hear the stories of when a wife is concerned about ma making a mortgage. That kind of stuff will not happen here under my leadership. Whatever we have to do as a board, I do not care what it is. We will take that issue off our men and women. It makes no sense to me that we ask them to put their lives on the line every single day, and then we don't do anything for them. And it's absolutely unacceptable to me that a wife or a spouse would have to be considered about that, con you know, consider that stuff. That's unacceptable to me in every way, shape, or form. I don't care what the policy is. I don't care what the legislation is. It is not going to happen in Metro Fire. We are going to change that this year, if even sooner, and I would hope it'd be sooner. And let them sue us if we're doing something wrong. I don't care. Because the wrong thing is having our men and women concerned about the issues you've talked about. Just unacceptable to me. And I've been doing this for a couple of weeks. I'd like to thank um, Mrs. Cole. I think sometimes we don't really understand the sacrifice that the family has to put up with for our men and women to be on 48-hour shifts and then mandatory and gone on all the holidays that normally most of us get to experience. And so I want to thank all of you for the hard work and sacrifice, whoever you are, to support your family member who works for us. And I commit to you that we will not have, we will not pull our foot off the gas on that issue because it just is not acceptable, bottom line. Um, I'd like to thank my spouse. For the sacrifice that she's currently doing so I can be here. It's not important what that's about, but she spends a great deal of time doing that. And so I publicly am obligated and want to share my love for her. And finally, you know, we've heard all night about the excellence of this organization and nothing could be truer. Every single individual we meet that's part of your teams just blow us away. It's just such a good thing for us as directors. But finally, given this season, I'm going to do my annual request. I'm going to ask that each of us think about an individual that's far less blessed, that doesn't know a thing about Metro Fire and the experiences we have every single time we gather, and then use this terrible device and call them and tell them that you love them. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you, Director. Well said. Director Sheets. I want to echo um, all of the comments regarding your leadership. It's been a fantastic year. It's been a very packed year. Um, and I think that um, the partnership with 522, the uh, administration, and um, everybody's commitment on this board to making uh, sure that we are making the right decision uh, for the organization that we're serving. Um, so, uh, under your leadership over the last six months, it's been incredibly impressive. Um, just really appreciate um, the thoughtfulness and the willingness to flex when you need to and, and making sure that you're transparent with us um, and with uh, the membership. Uh, so, I appreciate continuing to do that. <laughs> and then, Marnie, uh, you've been great, great uh, addition to the, to the board and really appreciate you. Um, you keeping us on track and making sure that we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's. Um, and I just want to wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas. There's many um, men and women who will not be fortunate enough to have that night off. 
Uh, so appreciate their sacrifice and um, be safe. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Director. Director Weber. Thank you for not forgetting me tonight, first and foremost. Uh, <laughs> I made it. I made it. Wow. I, I said that's never going to happen get again. Over it. I'm, I'm also a, a newbie here on the board, and uh, I want to thank all of the board for uh, your mentorship and, more importantly, your friendship. Uh, I truly are a bunch of smart folks up here, each individual in your own way. Uh, president Clark, I've only known one president. So we'll see what uh, the next one can do. Oh, I'm uh, sure. <laughs> I think you've done an excellent job. I've known the incumbent, or uh, this Gould, for many, many years, and uh, you're going to do a phenomenal job, too. Uh, anything you need to do with the campaign you just spoke of, I'm all, all in. So second, I'd like to thank Chief House for <laughs> accepting to do this. Um, but more importantly, uh, to his wife. Uh, Amber Cole knows this. All of your wives or husbands or spouses or partners all understand the sacrifices that are made um, throughout the year. And it's, it's not an easy, easy thing to do. Uh, so I thank you, but I thank your wife more uh, because she's really making a big, big sacrifice here. So... Um, I want to thank Jill Guzman. Uh, I've known Jill forever. And it was mentioned in the presentation earlier what an incredible backbone and the, the workload that she does privately and secretly every day to make this place run like a top. And, and she does it so, from, from my perspective, so effortlessly to make folks like that look fantastic. So <laughs> I thank you for your job. <laughs> I thank you for what you do, your job, and our friendship as well. It's been a heck of a year. Um, again, I don't know what the workload used to be like. But there were some big, big, big ticket items that were handled this year. Um, we got through them together. And when I say we, I mean Metro Fire members. Because all of you are rock stars. Every single one of you have contributed in many, many different ways. I thank all of you for the brilliance that you bring to the table every single day it it's just blown blown me away of what you folks actually do because when i was on a hose line i didn't think there was much work being done up here i am <laughs> very very impressed that i have been so wrong for so many years so thank you all for everything that everybody does in this organization um, have a nice christmas uh, be safe be help help i Disagree with Rice. You can be safe. It is a dangerous job, and I agree that, uh, or disagree with him again, I think it is a high-five job. It's not a dig-me job, but it's definitely a high-five. Take pride in what you do. Support your brothers and sisters. And uh, most importantly, uh, wear your BAs. I really, just wear your BAs and take care of yourselves. Have a nice Christmas, and thank you. Safety first. Finally, not finally, but I guess I'll be finally. Uh, Director Sailors, <laughs> congratulations again on your five-year anniversary. Thank you very much. Um, I feel blessed being up here with all of you. Um, this this year has been fantastic. We have done so much. This whole professional organization is like no other. Um, and I have been part of others in the region. Um, I first want to just thank everyone for the great presentations. And I do really love getting the presentations and getting to know the people behind the scenes. This has been such a nice change. Um, I do want to shout out a huge thank you to Engine 111. Last Saturday, we had our 
Christmas parade in Rio Linda. Um, we got to lead the whole parade on Engine 111. Um, and it's, it's a very sad note that I have to say that we did not have old Betsy, the, one of the first original fire engines that usually leads the parade. Um, because the person who drives it and takes care of that old engine, Terry Barnes, is very ill. Terry Barnes has worked for Metro Fire. Does anybody know how long? 64 years or something? He's 84 years old. I can tell you this. Um, and I would like to, on our next board meeting, have us give him a resolution, put it on the agenda, and we present him with a resolution, and we dedicate Old Betsy to him. Mm -hmm. I'd second that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because that man and his wife and family have served the community of Reland and Alberta for, gosh, around 64 years. Forever. Most of his life. And his dedication and his devotion needs to be recognized. Um, so everyone in Rio Linda is supporting this. Sue Frost is willing to support this and come. Um, and so for me and the community in District 1, we are all praying that Terry Barnes continues to be okay and we can see him on January 11th here in our boardroom to be recognized and we can get old Betsy here and dedicate old Betsy to him. Um, and so that's my Christmas wish for Terry Barnes. Other than that, I want to thank all of the crews that are <coughs> going to be working on all the holidays coming up. Um, stay safe out there, everyone. And not going to win that prize. Happy no. holidays. No. You just want to see the face, yeah. <laughs> not going to work. It's not a safe job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very director. much. Director, make safe decisions. Okay, boy. After all these, all the comments and uh, the, this is why I say these is the greatest board uh, out there. Um, all I could add right now is uh, I want to thank everyone for the uh, leadership and legacy uh, recognition, uh, all the work that uh, that uh, uh, Brenda, uh, I mean, she's just amazing, Brenda. And also want to thank uh, um, April and Allie for their, uh, I mean, and by the way, you can you get a chance to look at uh, our little uh, uh, Starking Elementary uh, um, deal that we do with Santa. I want to thank the Central Labor Council because they always they always uh, step up to the plate, and um, the the, uh, the guys from Station Eleven, we had a, a lady in the group, and you know some of you know often oftentimes the teachers and all that they want to get up and have uh, pictures of five you know firefighters. And they were like, "Well, you got a this is a, we thought they were all firemen, you know. I said, you got a woman here." I said. I said, yeah, get used to it. <laughs> we have firefighters and women, too. I mean, you might not want to run up and take a picture with them, but you got enough guys to, you know, that you want to do that with, you know. <laughs> right? So I, they just got to get used to it. And it was an exciting, it was an exciting, uh, uh, um, exciting event, you know. And, and, and like I said, I want to thank everybody. And also, when I was thanking everyone, I, I failed to mention the staff that, uh, as president, the staff has just been, it was just amazing. It's just, I mean, like, uh, I forgot, um, what is it, Mr. Blitz? Uh, mentioned, that, you know, our embarrassment of riches, and I, I sincerely mean that, that this is this place is just full of talent. So uh, I also want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and as Director Gould uh, mentioned, uh, think about someone that uh, is having a hard time, that is I uh, doesn't have enough food. I have to have to go to the, the, the food closet to to have enough to to feed their family for the holiday. Uh, think about uh, somebody other than yourself, and uh, 
and uh, thank you for uh, all your support. As and 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 I'm like I said, I'm humble, and, and I couldn't, you know, I, I could not be uh, the leader that you all uh, espoused and talked about without your help. I mean, it, it's a it's a it's a collaborative thing, and the chief, and the, you know, it's all of us working together. Arthur, you know, forget Art, he's doing a good job too. <laughs> He keeps his legs together. <laughs> yeah, so I want to wish everyone a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, and, and just like Director Jones said, all the other uh, holidays that are celebrated, Kwanzaa and then, you know, the Yom... What's the... the Hanukkah. Hanukkah, thank you. All right. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll, before we uh, adjourn to a closed session... I'd like to have a moment of silence for uh, Bernie Necker and also to remember uh, our fallen uh, director, Matt Kelly, and others that have passed on. Thank you all for attending this meeting. And uh, we do not want to see you when we come back exactly. out. Exactly. No safe. matter what the chief Be said, safe. go away. Be safe. We gotta have a. Yeah, we have a bio. Break. Recording stopped. Yes. <laughs> yes.